Welcome to this guide on how to turn the original Frustrator X from this into a fully fledged clan base. The video covers three parts. Upgrading the base to sheet metal and armored as you get richer, adding a shooting floor, and further extending the base into a large clan base with inner peak downs for online raid defense. If you want to experience raiding or defending out of the fully upgraded version, we have teamed up with Raid Simulator. Raid Simulator is a community that runs several Rust servers on which two teams are pitted against each other in simulated raids. The hosts kindly offered to feature the upgraded version of the original Frustrator X as one of the raid targets. The link to their Discord will be in the description. There you can find the IP addresses of their servers. This video assumes that you have already built the original Frustrator X. If you're looking for the build steps, the video will be linked in the description. There's one little thing you should do differently when building the basic base. You need to change the airlock so that it provides more stability to the rest of the base. The pit behind the exit door needs to be turned into a raised foundation. If you have already built the pit, please consider soft side picking the low wall and the foundation. Let's jump into the build. We first start with the upgrades. The upgrades are straightforward. We will upgrade everything in the core to armored and virtually everything else to sheet metal. Start by upgrading those roofs that stick through the wall of the entrance and the adjacent chute to armored. This way the TC is protected by two armored building blocks. Head into the core. Upgrade all the floor tiles and the ceilings of the core to armored. The chutes of the main loot rooms will be upgraded to armored as well. Start with the one that protects the TC. Eventually you can upgrade the column in the core, though that's not as urgent. I often get asked why I do not always upgrade the wall frames that hold garage doors to sheet metal, as garage doors have 600 health points and wall frames only 500. This is because those health points or HP values are misleading. It takes 4 rockets to destroy a stone wall frame, but only 3 to destroy a garage door. Nevertheless, the case can be made for upgrading them, as stone wall frames in some cases take splash damage through walls and metal wall frames allow to replace doors during online raids more often before they break. Inside of the auxiliary rooms you want to upgrade practically everything to sheet metal. This goes for the bedroom, the starter unit and the entrance. While upgrading the entrance, upgrade all single doors with armored doors. Eventually, you want to upgrade the loot rooms to armored as well, in particular the door frames and the stairs. This makes the most sense if during the build you already upgraded the foundations of the loot rooms to armored as well. In the minicopter hangar you want to upgrade the missing floor tile in the core to armored. Anything else should be upgraded to sheet metal over time.
finally head outside. Upgrade all raised foundations to sheet metal. Upgrade every missing wall as well. Further, consider upgrading the wall frames that hold up the auto turrets to sheet metal. Sheet metal wall frames appear to have smaller hitboxes, so they should be less likely to block the turret's field of vision. To leave you prepared, this is what the upkeep looks like after all those upgrades. Over 10k metal fragments and over 300 high qual per day might be intimidating, but remember that you can delay the upgrades until you are established enough. And while I showed you these upgrades first, you can actually delay them until you're done with the rest of the upgrades shown in this video. This concludes the first phase of the build. In the second phase of the video, we're going to add a shooting floor. For its design, I collaborated with my fellow YouTuber Simple S, who makes outstanding group bases. If you like the features of the final design, but are looking for something a bit more affordable, check out his Vanisher design. The shooting floor is designed to be extended later on. Meaning, if you build it, you can later extend the base with the outer ring and peak downs. To retain the ability to extend it, you'll have to accept a few drawbacks for the time being, such as the lack of great external peak downs. We start by making sure that all sides above the auto turrets have those door frames on which the wind turbines are situated. Put ceilings on top of those triangles. Then add in single doors and garage doors. Next, let's make sure that the minicopter landing pad will remain usable. In front of the landing pad, build full walls onto the outer ring. Place two square foundations going out from those and add three triangles. If they don't place, check whether a large furnace is below them. You might have to destroy it. Cover the gaps with carpets so that the minicopter won't get stuck there. Now add a garage door on one of the sides. Then add window frames wherever there's a triangle. Eventually you want to have them sheet metal, but stone works for now. Fill them in with metal embrasures. Fill in floor tiles everywhere, except for those squares. We will use those squares for a special kind of peak. In his Vanisher design, Simple S used a somewhat forgotten technique to create fantastic peaks from shop fronts. It uses a glitch that originally was shown to me by Crimstick. If you place a shop front, place stairs so that the top touches the wall frame and then destroy the wall frame, the shop front remains floating. This can create tiny and insanely sneaky peaks to shoot through. On this side of the square, I recommend to place a wall frame to make up for the loss of stability from having a floating shop front. Here is one little decision to make. If you are certain that you will extend the base further and build the outer ring, simply build a floor above the stairs. However, if you plan to leave it at just the shooting floor, build those half walls on the outside and above the wall frame, and low walls around the two remaining sides. This way you can pop up via the stairs and shoot raiders who are on top of your base. You're going to build three of these, meaning that raiders have to watch and guard three sides. One thing I would do is to add a shotgun trap to each of them. If raiders crash land on the roof, the traps might surprise them and take a few of them out before they can even react. Those who survive now find their mobility to be severely limited by the traps. In any case, since the plan for this video is to show the full extension, we just add simple floors. Outside of the doors above the auto turrets, we're going to create external peak downs. Locate those adjacent two squares. Add 5 triangles like this. The landing pad will already have 3 of them. Simply complete it by adding another triangle on each of the sides. If you plan to only have this shooting floor, feel free to place windows around those triangles to create protected external peaks. However, since in this video we are planning to extend the base further, we leave them open. If you feel that this leaves you too exposed, add a few barricades. It can be a bit tedious to destroy them later, so they might end up being part of the peaks for good though. To get on top of the roof for now, add ladders in the center of those triangle platforms. This is not ideal, but good enough for the time being. Further, I would recommend a section of the shooting floor. While you might be tempted to use garage doors, consider using double doors instead. 
they add less to the upkeep and they're much faster to open and close, which can be important to maintain the effect of surprise and keep yourself safe. My recommendation would be to place two on each side of the squares with the garage doors and one on the side of the shopfront peak that already has a wall frame. Only in front of the minicopter hangar I would have two garage doors to protect against door raids. This concludes the second phase of the upgrades. Be warned, if you use sheet metal all the way, you will end up with an upkeep of close to 14k metal fragments per day. On the other hand, a full metal shooting floor can be a good investment if you plan to take heli from it. In the third phase of the video, we're going to add an outer ring with inner peaks and tons of external facing peaks that will give you multiple vantage points for each direction should you be raided online. Start by completing the ring of floor tiles around the shooting floor. Then place stone wall frames onto the outer ring of foundations wherever those floor tiles match the foundations. These wall frames will provide extra stability for our external peak downs. Further add those inner peaks, they will prevent you from falling through the cracks by accident. In case you have the blueprint of the chain link fence gate, place two each below the auto turrets. This will help to keep raiders contained to one side of the peaks. Now place two stories of walls around the outer perimeter of the raised foundations. If you wish to be able to access the outer ring later on, place an armored door here, pretty much opposite of the main entrance. On the outside of the shooting floor, locate the single triangle flanked by two triangles, which is stabilized by those wall frames. Add three square floors going out from those. Place windows and wall frames as shown. Only on the rightmost square place the window onto a half wall and then add another half wall on top. In the corner of the leftmost square place a box to jump onto it for better angles. Add metal embrasures and doors before you continue. Then jump onto the window frame of the rightmost square and place a roof ramp leading up to the raised window. This creates another fantastic peak that keeps you very well protected. Place four double doors. Two in front of the open squares, one between the roof ramp and the other two external peaks, and one to the right of the peak with the roof ramp. Two of them can be closed from the inside of the shooting floor, which can be extremely helpful to trap raiders. To the right of those external peaks, simply place solid walls until you reach the triangle above the auto turret pod. Only where the helipad is, consider placing a garage door. With that outer ring in place, the former shooting floor has now become your second line of defense. To not lose it immediately in case of a raid, add reinforced glass into each window. Place ceilings on top of everything apart from the peak with the roof ramp. Here we're going to build a full height 1x1 one one as roof exit. This little exit has a few tricks that makes raiding from the roof a nightmare for raiders. This half height floor tile will house one auto turret that points at the roof. Use them to retake the roof in case raiders land on top of the base. Please know that you will have to add a third wind turbine with a third electrical circuit to feed these auto turrets. The upside is that this makes the base look very symmetrical. Another great thing about these roof exits is that they exploit a property of roof ramps that I first learned from S. Jaden. The physics engine will make any item or dead body slide down the roof. This means whoever is killed on that roof ramp will slide down into the external shooting floor. Below we will add two undrainable shotgun traps, one before and one behind the door. Now if you get killed by enemy players on the roof, your body will slide down into safety. If those enemy players follow you, the shotgun traps will kill them and their bodies will slide down out of reach of their bodies. But we don't stop there. As you know, garage doors open super slowly and you might get killed before you even have the chance to close them again. We therefore add a passive circuit from the Raptor base, a pressure pad connected to a door controller that is paired with a garage door. This has two use cases. First, if you want to check the roof without leaving the garage door open, use it to have a teammate use the pressure pad to open the door. It will close by itself automatically. Second, if you died and the garage door is open, simply run over the pressure pad to close it without exposing yourself. 
If you are an electricity expert, you can even consider adding heartbeat sensors to the wall frames that open the doors in the presence of enemy players on the roof. For the simplest possible electrical circuit, connect them to a second door controller. Apparently doors can have two independent door controllers. You will need to find a new place for the third large battery. I'd recommend to sacrifice one of the lockers on the second floor. Once you completed the peak downs on all three sides, the features of these roof exits turn them into a powerful way of countering roof raids. On the roof itself, we're going to create more peaks via roof ramps. To the right of the outermost peak down, place a wall frame. Onto the wall frame, place a reversed roof ramp. Close it off with a double door. This will give you an angle to shoot people close to the base while protecting you from fire afar. Filling the remaining slots per side with normal roof ramps. In spaces with the right angles, this creates those wonderful tiny peaks. If you can still handle a higher metal fragment upkeep, we're going to do a few more upgrades to the outer honeycomb. Since we're still on the roof, consider upgrade the floor tiles above the core to armored. This makes tunneling into the base from the top even more expensive. Further, consider upgrading the shooting floor floor tiles on top of the outer ring to sheet metal for the same reason. Then, we're going to upgrade those outer walls as well. However, simple as proposed not to upgrade all of them, but apply a checkerboard pattern instead. This works the following. Start by completely upgrading the two sides behind the inner peaks to sheet metal. On the five walls between those, however, only upgrade every second wall. And here is why. If all the walls are the same tier, raiders will use four or eight rockets to blow a 2x2 two two sized hole into the wall. This gives them a lot of angles to suppress the peak downs. With checkerboard patterns, the base offers opportunities to breach through the outer layer with only four rockets. The breaches, however, will give raiders much fewer angles and are easier to be patched. Further, reaching a decision might bind their cognitive resources while you gear up for defense. One last tip. With all the shooting floor space, distribute a few sleeping bags up there as well as a few coat locked small boxes. Have the boxes contain materials to fix breaches such as building plan, hammer, wood, metal fragments and high external walls. At the same time, consider leaving a rocket launcher loaded with a single rocket in there. You never know if you might get the chance to shut down a raid this way. With all those upgrades, the base now sits around a whooping 20k metal fragments and 400 high qual upkeep per day. That's not cheap, but perfectly doable for a team of 6 to 8 dedicated people these days. In return, you get a base that's strong against online and offline raids. If raiders try to breach the three main loot rooms through the outer walls, they need to go through one high external wall, one armored door, two sheet metal walls and three armored walls, which according to my calculation comes out at a 69 rocket raid. Since most raids don't go down the most ideal way, that's 70 plus rockets, which is almost four rows of rockets. Drilling down from the top comes even more expensive, as raiders have to pass three armored floor tiles, one armored wall and two sheet metal floor tiles. What I didn't talk about it is, if you run a base this size, you probably want a stronger external TC design. I have a short video for an external base coming soon, which would work fantastically with this design. Further, I have glossed a bit over the extended electrical circuit. While there is a dedicated video on the electrical circuit of the base, I did not show how to wire up the heartbeat sensors and the auto turrets on the roof. I might do this in another video. In any case, I hope you found this video as fun to watch as it was for me to designing this monster. Take care, Evil Wurst, out.